In this video, we will be going over a really great 4K budget camera setup for creating content. What's up everybody, I'm Jake McHugh and this channel is all about making better videos. I do gear reviews and test videos to help you determine what gear you need to make the videos you want to achieve. If that's something that may interest you, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. The setup I'm talking about in this video is the Panasonic G85 with a two lens kit that will cover you for most situations. Like most of my videos, I will be mentioning a lot of products throughout and I will have all those linked down in the description below and those links will be affiliated which means I will receive a commission at no extra cost to you. Now this setup could go a few different ways but more on this in a little bit. The G85 can be found on the used market now for around $500 to $550 and sometimes as low as $450. The reason for this camera in particular is because it's a great value for the money. It has many video friendly features along with great IBIS which is important for handheld shooting or vlogging. The first setup is more of a studio setup with two prime lenses and for the first one we have the tiny 4 14mm f2.5 pancake lens and this usually can be found used on eBay for around $120. This lens will cover us for our talking head shots like this right here but it'll also be awesome for vlogging because of its super small size. You easily could fit this lens in a pocket and it keeps your camera nice and compact and light for when shooting on the go. The next lens is going to be the Panasonic 25mm f1.7 and this one can be had for $150 brand new. This will be our go-to lens for when shooting our b-roll due to to the fact of its shallow depth of field and in low light situations with its faster aperture. Now it's time to move on to audio and to stay in line with our budget we are going to go with the Rode Video Micro which is a very awesome mic for the money coming in at around $60. If you want to go with something even cheaper then I would recommend the Movo VXR10 which is $40 and I actually did a video comparing the Rode and the Movo which you can find in the corner in the cards and down in the description below. To improve our audio even a little bit more we're going to use a cheap microphone stand to boom our mic overhead out of frame. The key to good audio is getting the microphone as close as possible to our subject and this allows us to do it at an affordable price. The only other accessories we need are a 5 8 to quarter 20 adapter to mount our microphone to the mic stand and a 3.5 millimeter extension cable so we can plug our mic into our camera. We are now testing this exact setup here so you can see how it looks and sounds and to be honest for the money it doesn't look too bad and the nice thing is that it's a very compact setup which makes it easy to pack up and shoot on the go if you need to relocate somewhere else. When you add up the total price for the camera, both lenses, the mic, the mic stand, the mic adapter, and the extension cord, you're roughly paying $950, which leaves you some room for a small tripod if you don't have one yet. I will make sure to link to some tripods down in the description below, that way you can look for some if you don't have one. Now, to make a few notes about the setup, first, it does exclude lighting, and I feel like that in itself is a whole nother beast. But if you're first starting off, you very easily could just use a window in your house as this will give you a nice large and soft light source. Second, the autofocus on this camera isn't the greatest at times. I'm actually shooting with it on right now. That way you can see how it behaves in a situation or setup like this. But most of the time with Panasonic cameras, I prefer to shoot in manual focus due to the fact that their autofocus system isn't quite there yet compared to other brands. Make sure to let me know what you think of how this shot looks and all the B-roll clips that you saw shot with this camera set up here down in the comments below. The second setup is going to be for a more run and gun or vlogging situation. To do this, we're actually gonna go with the kit lens that comes with this camera, and again, with the 25 millimeter prime. The kit lens is actually pretty good and will have better stabilization with dual IS and has more versatility, but it lacks the fixed aperture, which is preferred for video use. With the 12 to 60 millimeter, you roughly get a 24 to 120 millimeter full frame equivalent, which is great for when on the go and you need the range. And for dual IS, this is where I IBIS from the camera and the stabilization from the lens work together to give you the smoothest footage possible when shooting handheld, and I will show you this in a little bit. Again, the 25mm will be for our b-roll shots when we want the shallower depth of field, and for low light when we need the faster aperture as well. For audio, you easily can just use one of the two mics that I mentioned before once again, and for this setup, I'm going to go with the Rode Video Micro. I happen to prefer the Rode Video Micro just a little bit more with Panasonic cameras due to the fact that you really can't turn down the preamps as much as you can with other cameras and with the Movo it's a hotter microphone and sometimes it'll cause some peaking or clipping issues. When adding up the total cost of this kit here it'll roughly set you back a little over $900 which gives us some wiggle room for a vlogging tripod and I'll make sure the link to some down in the description below. Alrighty so what you are seeing here is dual IS at 12 millimeters and as a disclaimer I'm technically using the 12 to 35 f 2.8 from Panasonic as I don't own the kit lens but basically at the wide end of both focal ranges on these lenses, they're the same. You got 12 millimeters, you got f2.8 aperture, 
and you have dual IS. Now, a benefit to having a lens like this one here or the kit lens is that it has that versatility in its focal range. For example, if you need to punch in real quick, you can easily just punch in and you have that ability to change your focal length at a moment's notice. Otherwise, with the Prime, you'll have to swap lenses out if you need to punch in or go even wider yet. So that's the advantage with this here. Usually Primes are a little bit sharper, but I found that with even the kit lens and this lens here, the 12 to 35, you really don't have to worry about sharpness. Both are great lenses. And the main thing is, is that dual IS giving you that really, really nice smooth footage. So let's try the 14 millimeter next. Alrighty, so what you are seeing now is the 14 millimeter f2.5 pancake lens. And this lens here does not have any image stabilization. So all the stabilization is done being with the sensor on the G85. So the footage probably will be a little bit more shaky, but I want to know what your guys' thoughts are down in the comments below. Is it good enough? Is it not? Now with the 14 millimeter, it's a little tighter of a, uh, than 12. And then because of that, I took my tabletop tripod and extended it as far as away as I can. So that way we have a little bit wider of a view. It's a little bit tighter, but I, it, you can make it work. Now this lens is a little bit nicer to shoot with due to the fact that it's super tiny. So it's nice and light. It's basically a body cap on the camera body here. And it makes it really nice and easy to shoot with. And your arm doesn't get as tired when you're vlogging like this. What it lacks though is that stable footage that you would get with dual IS with the other lenses and you're stuck with that fixed focal length. So there is pros and cons to each setup here, but you have to find what works best for you. This is really fun due to the fact that it's super small and compact, easy to pack around, easy to take anywhere on the go, and it's very light. Make sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think between the two lenses. Can you vlog with this lens? Is it too shaky or is it good enough? And is the other with using dual IS really that great? So make sure to let me know. I'm sorry about stepping on all the leaves. The audio probably isn't the best here, but we got to make it work. It's fall. The leaves are falling. There's nothing we really can do about it. So let me know down in the comments below what you think between these two lenses and let's go back into the studio. Overall, I think this camera is very overlooked for what it offers at its price point. And there's a lot of lenses to choose from once you figure out how you like to shoot. I would like to know if you guys prefer shooting with the tiny primes that the Micro Four Thirds system offers and being stuck with the fixed focal lengths or shooting with zooms instead. I often find myself really enjoying the small primes like the 14 millimeter F2.5 when on the go, but I really like the versatility of the zooms and I find myself using those more often, but I kind of want to hear your guys' input on this as well. So that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. And last but not least, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.